Hey guys, wanted to make a video just um, showing how to use these water brushes. I've been having lots of fun with them the last few months and they make it easy to paint anywhere. Like I, I can paint in my chair or in the car. Um, they're just, they're not messy at all. I'm guessing they'd be great for kids. I haven't experimented with that yet. Um, so I wanna show you how these work. Basically it's just a paintbrush that you can put water in the brush. So. Um, when I first saw these, I just quite, couldn't quite get my head around how they would work really well. I thought the water would just drip out like crazy and thought they'd be hard to clean, but they're actually really easy to use and super fun. So, um, let me show you what they are first. They come in several sizes. I kind of like the Pentel brand, but I haven't tried too many other ones. Um, the, but yeah, they come in several size tips and the tips are interchangeable. Like when you screw this off to put water in, you can put it on uh, another base. So if you run out of water in one you can just switch it to another one if you're just in the car or whatever so that's handy um and the way they work is you just squeeze them a little bit to get some water to come out hopefully this won't be too too shadowy it's so nice outside i wanted to do it outside but it's gonna be shadowy um but yeah you can you can squeeze water onto your project first um or you can just get the brush tip a little bit wet and i keep a sponge or a paper towel handy to get excess water off or to switch in between. I'll show you when I change colors in a minute. Uh, but first I'm gonna show you how I got my design to this stage. I've learned a few tricks. I can't draw anything, seriously. Um, I just steal things off Pinterest and um, I've learned lots of little tricks. So the trick, one of the tricks for this design is to start with a circle, just trace a circle from a jar lid or whatever. Um, and that has made such a difference in making designs look a little bit more um, I don't know if they just look more symmetrical or something. They just, even if you don't use the whole circle, which I'm not. Um, but so then I trace or I just sketch out my design. I just start with a, a big flower and then make some similar ones, uh, but a little smaller on either side. And then maybe a couple even smaller flowers and then fill in with some leaves. Uh, and it doesn't take much at all to make a pretty cool looking design. So I sketch it with pencil and then I go over it with a black pen and I thought I would just add a couple more details here. Like I'm still not gonna use my whole circle, but maybe I'll just add a couple details here. Oops, I scribbled, that's okay. Um, and now I need to erase my pencil lines before I start painting, otherwise they're gonna be kind of permanent. And any kind of eraser works, but if you wanna do a lot of this, I highly recommend getting one of these gummy erasers. It's super great. They, um, they erase really well and they don't leave any crumbs. So that's great for in the car too, or in my chair watching TV at night. They're great because when I'm done, I just put the lid on and stick it in a little jar by my chair and I'm done. There's no cleaning up and um, no jars, jar of water to knock over or empty or um, so they're great. And the water lasts a long time in them too. All right, so I have my design um, and I erased my lines and I almost always use the smallest tip one because I like to make small things. So my brush is already a little bit wet because I squeezed some water out of it. So then I can just go, uh, I didn't pick what colors I was gonna do, that was dumb. Eh, let's see, let's start with this one. And then you can just paint it right on. And like any watercolors, you can get um, the surface wet first if you want, wet on wet or wet on dry, whatever, any of the, any of the watercolor methods work but then you can just brush it on and I'm very messy and that's okay. Okay. These paints that I'm using right now are handmade paints from an Etsy site called Hydrocolor. Oh my goodness, they're amazing, but they're also super expensive. So I've been experimenting with making my own and that's really fun too. That's a different video. Okay, when I if I wanna switch colors, yep, pretty shadowy. Uh, I just wanna wipe it on my sponge, squeeze a little bit of water through and then it goes, you know, the water goes right through the bristles. So it actually is easier to clean than a regular paintbrush and just wipe it on a paper towel or a sponge. If I use a sponge, I like to get it a little bit wet first. I just squeeze a little bit of water out um, I think it works better than a dry sponge, but uh, then I'm ready to go pick a different color. 
And if your paints aren't getting activated enough, you can just squeeze a drop of water in there and let it sit for a minute. Um, and I have my next color. So, and you can mix them and uh, you, like I have a paint tray back there with a white, you know, lid that you can mix colors in if you want. Um, and it works, you know, just like any other kind of watercolor painting. But I think these brushes are really fun. So I so. finished painting um, and I wanted to point out a couple more things. Uh, one, I've heard that you can just put uh, paint or ink right in these things. So that would be interesting to try sometime too. I haven't tried that. Um, feels like it'd be harder to get ink out of the brushes, but maybe not. Um, but that's another, another idea or watered down paint probably would work too. Um, and then the next thing I want to mention is, uh, you don't have to have fancy paints at all. Like I just love to play with nice things <laughs> and, and I like to make my own and try to make them not expensive too. But, um, but a dollar ninety nine Crayola watercolors are just great, and you can do all kinds of cool things just with that. So you don't need fancy stuff at all. Uh, what does matter though is the paper. Um, the nicer the paper you use, the nicer your stuff's going to turn out, um, and it's not cheap. So there's some kind of mid grade, you know, student watercolor paper, but you really do want watercolor paper for using watercolors. Um, otherwise, it will. You can still practice, um, but it will get pretty warpy. Um, and then another thing I wanted to mention is on this particular one, I didn't do any shading at all. I just pretty much filled them in solid and it still looks cool. It gets a little bit of shading just because it's hard to make it perfectly even or solid if you wanted to. But um, on the one I have over here in the corner, I did a little bit more, you know, watercolory kind of shading, but you can play with that. But even if you don't do that at all, it still looks pretty cool. And then uh, one more thing, after it's dry, you can go back uh, with the pen and add some details if you want also so that's kind of fun too you could add some veins on the leaves whoops i went the wrong way i'm looking at it upside down so i'll make my veins go the right way but there's almost nothing that can't be fixed one way or another <laughs> you just pretend it was part of the design right so anyway really fun project for grown-ups or kids so i hope you'll try it <laughs>